Hey guys, how you doing? Uh, some of you may know what this machine is. It is a foundation drilling rig used for making holes in the ground for piers and foundations, uh, concrete shafts. And as you can tell, they've had a bad day. They broke the end of that Kelly bar off. And so they called me out to fix it up. As you can see, uh, that piece coming down off the machine, I already started gouging off around the pin and around the base of that to get some of that weld off. And so you'll see in the next frame here, uh, since I've gouged all that off, they're knocking that pin out. You look at the bottom there, I, I, I gouged around the perimeter to get that weld off. So after they get that off, uh, being that it's so full of dirt and sand, it, it becomes a challenge to get knocked out. So we use the machine itself to kind of knock it out. And uh, it takes a little while, bust it loose. Once it comes loose, then I can work on it on the truck. Now we'll be having to make all that new again, uh, reusing the same piece and just repositioning that pinhole. So that uh, will work. Uh, Got to get them running, right? So a little bit of knocking out and then I can begin. There you go, it's coming out, coming out slowly. So here we got it out. If you look onto the right, you see that square flange and then that weld that is left. I ended up cleaning all that off and putting it on the truck. There's that silver shiny spot it's where I removed all that weld. Next step is to cut a new hole. And what I did is I laid out where the new hole should go and I used an exothermic slice torch. Really handy tool. If you can get one, get one. They are expensive, but they work. And so this thing will help you pierce almost anything. Wood, concrete, anything. It'll cut through anything. And so I'll be piercing through this solid four and a quarter bar, I believe four and a quarter solid bar. And as I mentioned, I already marked out where the hole, the new pin hole should go. So as you're pressing the oxygen lever, it's shooting back all the molten metal at you. And one of the tricks to be successful at it is to always have it moving, meaning have that rod moving in and out or around just so that it doesn't get stuck with the cooling metal. Because it'll get stuck and just create problems. I almost made it all the way through with just that one rod. But they're only 22 inches long, I believe, or 24 inches long, and they burn fast, as you can see. So, next one here, I'll make it all the way through, and then I'll start working my way around the drawing that I made on that bar to the correct pin diameter size. There you go, made it through there. Now, slowly, I'm working from the outer perimeter in. I'll be going in a circle pattern, kind of ovaling out or circling, opening up, I should say, that hole. There you go, going in a circle and working my way all the way through. These rods go pretty fast. They only last about 30 seconds, maybe 45 seconds, depending on how much oxygen uh, you press. The handle is very similar to that of a car wash handle but it's variable in the sense that you can give it more or less oxygen pressure and so you can burn hotter or faster and of course the rods will burn up a little bit quicker as well so just as I was doing the torch scarfing if you've seen that video you can kind of see what you're doing once you look in that hole and it'll scarf away very similarly that molten metal or the metal that you're trying to remove and you can kind of get a pretty good uh, shape to it if you real careful make a nice round circle so here in a second I'll be jumping on the, on the other side and completing that side to make it somewhat round as well now that'll be just a rough uh, opening and I'll be able to clean it up later and so now that I got from both sides what that is helping to do is helping to preheat that bar because I'm going to be cutting that flange that my hand was on right there. I'm going to be cutting my, that flange off of it so that I can create a new end to that Kelly bar. And with it preheated like that, it'll make it much easier to cut through. I believe I used a number two tip with about 70 uh, pounds of pressure on the oxygen. And I set my 
preheat flames a little too hot because the material was already hot. So I didn't need to do that and you'll see what I mean once it, it falls off. Uh, when the material is too hot what can happen is you can round off the top edge of the parent metal uh, that you're cutting and that is just too hot. Really surprised I was able to go all the way through in one pass. Worked out rather well. It was very slow though. So it took a while. Here we go getting started. And as if you if you've seen in some of my other videos, I do a little zigzag pattern. The zigzag pattern basically just helps to widen out the torch cutting curve or the opening so that there's enough room for all the slag to continue to pour out. Now I could have possibly used a lunch, much larger tip, maybe a three or number four. Uh, that would have worked as well, but I just don't carry those. So I make up for it with pressure. The higher the pressure, it should push through and it's actually less waste of oxygen, believe it or not. So I'm coming around the corner towards the bottom corner, making sure I try and cut all the way through it. So this was just to get that flange off. I left it a little bit long so that I could remark it again from the center line of the hole to the end of the Kelly bar. As you can see there, look at the top edge of that square, it's rounded off, kind of melted. It was just too hot. So fortunately I was able to at least cut it off in one piece, which was nice. So there as I've laid it out, from the center line of that hole to the end of the bar should be two and a half inches. So I remarked it and I started cutting it with my art gouger at this point. I'm a little more accurate with my, with my art gouger and so this is the way I chose to do it. Just cut little sections at a time until I was all the way through to the end and then I could clean it up with a grinder. I found this to be more accurate for me than to try and torch cut it square or flat again. It just seemed better for me. So there I was able to, it came out pretty good. And uh, the circle is all right, but now it's time to clean it up. So I'll grind the end of the Kelly bar a little bit, uh, clean it up. And you see it came out pretty flat. I hadn't cleaned it up yet, but that worked out well. And we reinstalled it onto the machine and I did the rest of the work from there. I had another video that I've recently posted that had something similar with a weld like that over we weld that pin back on. Now here we've got a new square flange to go on the on the piece and we welded it up, uh, brand new, and I threw some 7018 uh, 532 size rods on there and did all right. So it came out nice. So now at this point I'm using my art gouger in quarter moon sections. Let's say from the three to the six, the six to the nine, nine to twelve, to try and make sure that that hole is round. The exothermic did a decent job, and now I'm cleaning it up a little bit better so that it's actually as round as I could make it. Took a little work, but it worked out really well. Sorry for the bad video angle. Hopefully you guys can understand what I'm doing. You see doing little quarter sections there, all the way through to each end and from each end. I tried it once with a mag drill, but the mag drill didn't sit so square and flat on there, and it spun around and hit me, and uh, broke my bit. And so, wasn't doing that again. And so I figured this is good enough, worked out well. And with a little time and patience, you can make a nice round hole. So that's what I did here, you'll see here in the next clip. Uh, the hole came out pretty nice, and it worked out well. So, you can see the gouge lines there. 
uh, cleaned it up a little bit after that. And so uh, customer's happy, I'm happy, and it was all good. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Maybe you learned a little bit from it. Uh, so I appreciate your support. And again, thank you for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next one.